66 million years ago, much of Europe was covered by shallow seas and vast oceans. Lurking beneath the waves of what will one day become the Netherlands was one of the most terrifying marine predators of all time, the mighty Mosasaurus. Although Mosasaurus has been long extinct, the animal has become very popular today thanks to its inclusion in Jurassic World. And while Jurassic World did help introduce Mosasaurus to millions of people around the world, what was shown in the movies is far from what the animal was like in reality. So in this video, we'll be taking a look at what Mosasaurus was actually like and compare it to Hollywood's rendition. We will first take a look at what the Mosasaurus was really like according to science, and then we'll take a look at the Jurassic World Mosasaurus to see how scientifically accurate it is. Lastly, we will speculate upon what went into the DNA of the Jurassic World clone to make it look the way it does. And so, without further ado, let us begin. Mosasaurus Hothmoni lived during the end of the late Cretaceous period, from 70 to 66 million years ago. The animal was first discovered in the Netherlands in 1764. Since then, more fossils have been excavated around the world, showing that Mosasaurus Hothmoni ranged from North America all the way to Russia. Mosasaurs belong to a group of reptiles known as Toxiferans, which includes animals like the closely related monitor lizards and snakes. Based on the fossil record, the first representatives of this group appeared approximately 100 million years ago. The Mosasaur lineage began with monitor lizard-like reptiles such as Agelosaurus. Over the course of millions of years, these animals became adapted to life in the seas, and natural selection led to the rise of new traits and body plans. Flippers, tail flukes, and more streamlined bodies helped these lizards dominate the oceans, and by the end of the Cretaceous, Mosasaur species could be found all around the globe. While Mosasaurus Hoffmani was far from being the largest marine reptile to have ever lived, it was indeed the largest of the Mosasaurs. Previous estimates put the animal at 16 to 17.6 meters. However, the only rigorous skeletal reconstructions of Mosasaurus Hoffmani suggest that the animal was actually 13 meters in length and weighed approximately 7 to 8 tons. To better put this into perspective, this makes Mosasaurus Hoffmani as long as an American school bus and as heavy as a modern day orca. Thanks to various soft tissue remains from related species, scientists now have a more clear understanding about what these animals looked like in life. While we still don't know exactly what body patterns the animals had, we do know what color they generally were. Soft tissue preserved from the upper body of an older mosasaur species showed the presence of eumelanin. Eumelanin is a type of pigment responsible for darker colorations such as browns and blacks. This suggests that these animals were countershaded in life, where the top of the animal's bodies would have been in darker coloration, and the bottom of the animal's bodies would have been lighter in coloration. This acts as a form of camouflage in the deep ocean environments and is a very common trait in modern day ocean predators such as orcas as well as the living relatives of Mosasaurus such as monitor lizards. The teeth of Mosasaurus Hoffmani were very robust and sharp at the tip. The Mosasaurs were equipped with an additional set of teeth attached to the pterygoid bone. Located on the roof of the mouth towards the back, these teeth would latch onto prey items and prevent them from escaping. Once latched on, the Mosasaurus would use these teeth to process large chunks out of their prey items. Another impressive feature of these animals is the presence of a tail fluke. Given their large size, Mosasaur bodies would have remained stiff to reduce drag through the water, and thus their tail flukes would have helped to provide propulsion, while they would use their paddle-like flippers to steer. Fossils of Mosasaurus Hoffmani are the most common Mosasaur fossils found in the Maastricht Formation of the Netherlands. During the late Cretaceous, the Maastricht Formation was once covered in open oceans and shallow seas, teeming with life. A rich variety of habitats existed here, these being expansive meadows of seagrass, shallow marine systems, coastal coral reefs, open oceans, and subtropical islands. These various habitats are what allowed for the impressive diversity of animals here, from massive mosasaurs and sharks to bony fish and unique cephalopods. Given their larger and more robust size, Mosasaurus Hoffmani would have hunted the larger animals of the region. These would include large sharks like Squalicorex, the giant sea turtle Allopleuron, and other mosasaur species. 
In terms of competition, Mosasaurus hoffmanni had little to fear aside from other members of the same species. There was, however, another large Mosasaur species from this region, Mosasaurus lemonyeri, which almost rivaled in size to Mosasaurus hoffmanni. Compared to Mosasaurus hoffmanni, these animals had a much more slender body shape, a shorter skull, and sharper, elongated teeth better suited for catching slippery prey items such as bony fish and soft-body cephalopods. The differences in feeding style and prey preferences would have kept these two species from being direct competitors. However, this would not have kept Mosasaurus lemonyeri off of Mosasaurus hoffmanni's menu. Overall, Mosasaurus hoffmanni was the largest and most successful of the Mosasaurs, and these animals may have continued to thrive had it not been for the KT extinction event that had also wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs. And thus ends the chapter of a truly awesome and awe-inspiring animal of the ancient past. Now that we have gone over what Mosasaurus hoffmanni was truly like as an animal, let's compare it to the Jurassic World Mosasaurus. Now before we begin, it's worth mentioning that although none of the Jurassic World designs are meant to be accurate, the design team still incorporated key features of the real animal. For starters, the overall shape and body proportions are far from perfect, but they do resemble the general body plan of Mosasaurus. Furthermore, the Jurassic World clone possesses pterygoid teeth, which is a very important feature that distinguishes Mosasaurus from most other ocean predators. Finally, during the feeding show from the first film, it is mentioned that Mosasaurus fed upon sea turtles, sharks, and other smaller Mosasaurus, which is indeed true to Mosasaurus ecology. Now that we have covered these details, let's move on to the inaccuracies. So for starters, the biggest and most notable difference between the Jurassic World Mosasaurus and the real animal is its massive size. While weight is more difficult to calculate, we can get an approximate value for the animal's length. While the Jurassic World website claims that the Mosasaurus is 60 feet long, the on-screen animal is much longer. Test footage from Fallen Kingdom reveals how long the Mosasaurus really was next to the submarine. An average two-man mini-sub like Marine 1 ranges from 3 to 4 meters in length. In that case, this would make the Jurassic World Mosasaurus at least 45 meters long. This makes the Jurassic World Mosasaurus over three times longer than the real Mosasaurus and almost one and a half times as long as a modern blue whale. Moving on, we see that the Jurassic World Mosasaurus has rows of sharp pointed scales running down its back known as scoots. In fact, the animal possesses a hide more similar to that of crocodilians. In reality, Mosasaurus didn't have these scoots, and their bodies were instead covered by tiny scales. Furthermore, the large scales at the end of the animal's tail seem to create a pseudo fluke. In reality, the tail flukes were soft tissue structures used for propulsion. The Jurassic World clone uses its flippers instead for propulsion, when in reality Mosasaur flippers would have been used to help stabilize the animal. It's also worth mentioning that the Jurassic World Mosasaurus is a series of blues and light grays in coloration. In reality, the skin of Mosasaurus was most likely darker in coloration, with shades of browns, dark grays, and blacks as well as lighter colors on the bottom of the animal for countershading. Lastly, the final inaccuracy worth mentioning is the teeth. The teeth of the Jurassic World Mosasaurus are the incorrect shape and are very jagged and ununiform. This also goes for the pterygoid teeth. Furthermore, the teeth of Mosasaurus would have been obscured by lips as seen in modern day monitor lizards. Now that we have gone over the major inaccuracies present, let's speculate on what went into the DNA of the Jurassic World Mosasaurus to make it look the way it does. Now based on the Jurassic World lore, all of the clones are created by extracting fragmentary DNA from amber and fossils, and then filling in the gaps with DNA from modern day animals. So starting off, we will assume that Mosasaurus DNA was used initially. Since the closest living relatives of Mosasaurus are snakes and monitor lizards, it would make sense for DNA from these animals to be used. Here, we will use Komodo dragon and sea snake DNA. Perhaps the inclusion of sea snake DNA can help account for the added flexibility of the tail, as well as the shape of the teeth. Next up, it's not too far-fetched to assume that perhaps frog DNA was used for the Mosasaurus genome. 
Given that all the dinosaurs in Jurassic World have frog DNA, despite not being closely related to amphibians. Moving on, perhaps the presence of dorsal scutes can be attributed to the inclusion of crocodilian DNA. Finally, the last two animals we will include in the Jurassic World Mosasaurus DNA are pilot whales and walruses. The reason these animals are added to our speculative genetic recipe is because pilot whale and walrus calls were used to create the roars of the Jurassic World Mosasaurus. So perhaps in the film universe, DNA from these animals helped create these vocals. So there we have it, our speculative genetic makeup of the Jurassic World Mosasaurus. Again, nothing stated here is officially canon to the films, but was rather done so to help further drive the distinction between the fantasy of Jurassic World and the reality of the fossil record. I want to give a special thank you to Edmund Shanahan, Christian Hollywell, Incinerox, and Toon Duin for assisting in the research of this video and helping me design the more scientifically accurate Mosasaurus Hoffmani. The majority of the artwork and all of the animation work in this video was done by me, and if you would like to help support the channel in creating more videos like this, please consider pledging to the Patreon page, where you can also get some really neat rewards in return. Also, be sure to join the Discord server and follow Nature's Compendium on Instagram and Facebook, as well as Twitter for more updates on upcoming content. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, and as always, thank you for watching.